Does someone want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Okay, <laughs> to accept the wording as proposed. Yes. Okay. I second. So, okay, so now we need a roll call vote. Bob Smith, aye. Jim, aye. Cynthia Allen, aye. Megan, aye. There you go, Susan. Anything else we can do for you? Wait, wait Bob, about, Bob Klinger's here. How about Bob? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Bob. You're muted. You're muted, Bob. It actually doesn't show him as being muted. I wonder mm. if his microphone's not working or something. Yeah. Now it shows you're muted. Now try talking. No. Mm. Okay. <laughs> uh, let the record indicate that Mr. Klinger has raised his thumb in um, affirmation of the motion. Okay, Susan, Thank anything? Thank you very much. Okay, that, Thank that, you. That was it, I'll, and I will be back to you when we have more information on the panorama, um, but I wanted to get this in the works because it'll take some time to have it. Okay. Have it Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and we move now to financial report, Jim. Okay, I hope you all have received the uh, spreadsheet that I sent out. And there's actually two spreadsheets. Um, and I'll go into some detail for you, Bob, because this is the first time you've seen this stuff. Um, this is the municipal budget that was passed at the annual town meeting. And it's actually a, it been level funded for two years. This is year number number three, I think, uh, that we've tried to hold the, hold the line on, on the expenses. It's all from COVID related um, issues. So on the left, you can see all of the categories that we allocate um, the amount of the money in the municipal budget which is $76,860. And every month I get a report from the town treasurer of where this money is allocated in one of those, those line items. And I post it on this spreadsheet and I share it with you guys. Okay, so, so this just keeps us up to date on where we are at any given point in time. So at this point, after the second conclusion of the second month of this FY22, we have spent $13,178.45. And we have a balance of 63,681.55 uh, left to spend for this fiscal year. Um, below that is a item called sign. And that was the thousand dollars that we had left over for Sean Allen to refurbish our sign. And according to his email, he hasn't billed us yet. So that's still sitting there waiting to be spent. And below that is the lift. Uh, three years ago, uh, time flies, I convinced the finance committee to appropriate $35,000 to us for architectural work. And that was passed at town meeting. And so far we've had two invoices uh, for a total of 13,455. So there's still 21,565 in that account left to spend. And it's my hope that they will not spend it all. Okay. And that comes from my discussions with the architect over the last three or four years. So I'm hoping there's going to be some surplus there that we can use uh, for any cost overruns um, from our project for the lift. Um, any questions so far? Okay, the next page is special revenue. Account. I was going to ask, what's all the numbers on the very bottom? More out of curiosity. Oh, forget them. Forget that. I, I was okay. using it as a calculator. I forgot to erase them. They don't. It's just more out of curiosity than anything else. I, I discovered that after I sent it. Just so the next page is your special revenue accounts, and these again I get monthly from the town treasurer, and the way these work for, for Bob's benefit. The bottom uh, of the page, beginning with uh, line item 856 through 862, that is the seed money for our endowment. This, that, that we don't touch that. We will use the interest off of that to use, to populate the top of the page and the middle of the page, okay? That's where that money comes from. So that never changes. That's why you can see there's, there's um, 
there's no expenses against that account. It all gets transferred into, and we'll go into the top. Um, and these are the, um, the uh, monies that, that are unencumbered that we can use for anything. And mostly it's for maintenance, primarily for maintenance. Um, and the middle is monies that were left to us th through wills and trusts, and it's only for books. So that's all that money can be spent on is for books. There are some variations that we could use, maybe for some equipment, but most of it's for books. So we want to focus on the top of this page. And, and those fees, beginning with line item 236 through 854, those monies are available to us for whatever purpose we need. And I, and I can't emphasize enough, this, we have complete oversight of these monies. Okay, that's what we were elected to do. It's, it's very important that you keep that in perspective. Nobody can go in and draw from one of these accounts for any reason whatsoever. And I mention that because and I keep hearing it. Well, I can get money out of this account and this account. No, you can't. If you need to, you need to come to the trustees to take the money, okay? That's the only way you can do it. So, and I mention this again, because I, I hear there's events going on and there maybe not be funded by the friends. And, and this is for you, Cindy, if you want the trustees to fund one of these events, you can call any one of we six, any one of we six and get a, an immediate answer either by text, phone, email to use one of these categories listed at the top of this page for your purposes. You make your case and you got to convince who you're talking to that it's worthwhile to spend the money on that. And then we would discuss that in our next trustees meeting. Okay. And I further want to add how important this is. Municipalities are oftentimes audited. They're private audits that either are requested by the finance committee, the select board, the state, the I, anybody. If they want us audited, they will come in and audit and they look at everything. They're gonna look at our trust accounts. How do you administer them? How do you control them? What's your follow-up? What are your controls? So it's very important that you keep this in mind that this is not a candy jar. This has to be revoted on by the trustees in order to take monies out of any one of these accounts, okay? So right now, we have a total of $44,305 that we can use for purposes that we see fit to use it for, okay? With a vote of the trustees, okay? Any questions on that? I also wanted to point out, I got a message from the Tron treasurer that um, for whatever the reason, I think the reason is that the town meeting was so late in the year that the numbers that you're looking at were carried um, forward from 2021, FY21. And the next report will just take it from FY22. So this is inclusive of actually one year plus two months. Okay. And that'll get cleaned up as she's told me in the next cycle. Cynthia, did you have a question? Yeah, I do. So on those accounts from 236 to 854, the top chunk yes. of accounts. Yep. In the past, have we ever spent more than say the, you know, so there's the beginning balance of those and there's the revenue. Have we ever spent more than the revenue from those? No. Okay. No. So we've, you know, we're not dipping well, in. No, no, no. Excuse me. Let me clarify that. Have we ever spent more than the revenue? Yes, we have. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And so, yeah. and so, so that's, so we're not looking to constrain it to just the revenue from interest. No, no. We could, you, you focus on the beginning balance on that, those accounts and you can use anything in there. And right now, the beginning balance shows 40,726 40, plus the revenue minus the expenses is 44,305. That's available to us. Okay. okay. So, so Cynthia, the, the bottom line is that there are times when we're faced with a bill because something comes up that is not in our municipal budget and we have no other option but to dip into something to pay that bill. 
and sometimes it might be larger than you know 634.74, which was the revenue from a certain account. Um, so it's just hard to predict. Yeah. And I also want to go on record, Megan, that I have figured out how to make someone a co-host. I didn't realize that I had to hover my finger over their name in the participants list. It's all good now. I could actually do it. Yeah. So, you know, just to close, um, if, if Cindy needed to pay a bill and it was not to come out of the municipal budget, she picks up the phone and she'll call Bob first. Say, Bob, I need to pay the bill for such and such. Where do you want me to take the money from? And Bob would look at his thing and he'd say, take it from state aid, take it from Dickinson Library, take it from general donations, whatever he felt was sufficient. Okay, so she, there's two sets of eyes on that transaction. Okay, and so that's, that's how it works. If it was a, a larger sum, it might wait until our regular monthly meetings to talk about. So um, Again, I, I can't emphasize enough how important this is to keep good records uh, in case we ever get an audit. Okay? okay. Well, and the other point, which I don't know if you've heard before, um, Bob Klinger, is that if we don't use everything in the municipal budget in a year, in a fiscal year, we lose it. We don't get to keep it and roll it over. So the incentive is always to spend that down completely before going into these other funds, correct, Jim? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Can you guys, can you guys hear me now? Yes. I can hear you. Yes. Um, Cynthia, I used to work for uh, Department of Defense. I used to work for the Army, so I'm familiar with government budgets. Got it. Yes. So okay. I would agree. I would agree wholeheartedly. If it's been allotted or sent our direction. Um, it's on it's in our interest to spend it and not touch these okay are there any other questions on the financial report okay cindy um can you uh turn your camera on and we can see you and it's your turn hey and it's now director's report okay here i am so a few things have changed since I sent out my director's report. I sent emails out regarding all of it on Friday. Um, and I do want to clarify a few things that were brought to my attention after last month's trustees meeting. Um, when I had mentioned that I would ask Rebecca if she was able to work till eight o'clock on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I wasn't trying to give the impression that I didn't think I would have to be responsible for those hours if she wasn't, because I do know that we are a staff of two. And I wasn't trying to use childcare as an excuse to try to get out of any scheduled hours. It was just a challenge to try to coordinate that. And I have never expected my staff to accommodate my schedule. If anything, I have gone above and beyond to accommodate their schedule. Each day that my staff has asked for off, they have gotten off. Awesome. So moving on from that. Cindy, I could, was, I, could, I, could oh. I just, um, where's that coming from? That came from a member of the board. Okay. Okay. I will uh, share. No, I will share more information with you later, if that's okay. all right. Okay. Um, I was asked to include Wowberry numbers. So each week, forty-four email. We have forty-four subscribers, and that has led to people. Thirteen of those subscribers have clicked right from the Wowberry email into the catalog to be able to place their holds um, right through Wowberry to get the holds on the, the new release items they're looking for. Um, the mini split has been relocated downstairs. Dave Fowler and his helper came in last Wednesday and Thursday and completed the job. And while they were there, they fixed the tubing issue upstairs with the unit behind the circulation desk and they drilled new holes and retubed it so that hopefully going forward, we won't have any more issues of the tube blocking up and 
thus causing leaks. The problem is the, the holes for the tubing for that unit weren't drilled in the appropriate spot. So they got, um, they had to sort of support them the best they could. And when just a slight tap would make the unit, uh, the tubing adjust and the unit would start to fill up with back up with water. And that's what was causing the um, leaking. Canopy Overdrive um, has bought Canopy. So starting, I believe, in October or November, the, but, but that's actually a good thing because now our patrons who use Canopy are going to have access to much more materials than they were able to have access to before. And then um, book sale. The fall festival is the first Sunday in October. The Board of Health has okayed us having a book sale. It would just need to be outside and mass would strongly be encouraged of anyone who is there. So I'm not sure if that's something we want to take on this year or just consider to wash again this year. Or we can think about it and I mean, what do you want to do? <laughs> I mean, the cellar is loaded with books. Patrons have looked forward to it in the past. Yes, it is time consuming, but it's also an, a way to raise funds for the library or if the friends help to participate for the friends to be able to raise funds. And it doesn't have to, I mean, it can be bring your reusable bag and fill it for $5 or pay, you know, 50 cents will buy you a hardcover. It would just be a matter of, do we want it to take on this, take it on at this point in time, the undertaking? Well, I, I just, I'm a little confused because somewhere along the way, I thought that you and Rebecca were going to do this. We are. So as long as Rebecca and I want to do it, we can do it. No, I just, I just oh. want to be sure that we're still talking the same thing. Yes. So um, if you have to have it outside, which you do, um, yes. what if it rains? We have a tent. Oh, okay. Do you have a tent? We have there should be two tents down cellar in the basement. Oh, there's at least okay. one that I know of. Oh, okay. I, I I wasn't aware of that. All right. And um, how do you plan to get the books upstairs? Well, if we have volunteers, they can do a handful of books up the stairs. If not, then Rebecca and I will just take handfuls of books and put them upstairs and sort them out. But we won't put all the books out at once. We'll put them out and then as the tables start to sell out, we'll just add more books into the piles. Okay. Other comments and questions about that issue? Yeah, Bob. Um, Cindy, I have some, some of the easy up 10 by 10 tents. Is that what you're talking about in the basement? I believe it is one of those, yes. Right. I, I have some bigger tents that I that you if if you need more space and it looks like it's gonna be bad weather. Oh it is? Well I don't know. Oh I'm I don't saying. know yet either. And the and the date on this when it would be Sunday, October third. Okay. That's the same day that the fall festival the historical society is doing their fall festival. Okay. If unfortunately I'm out of town that weekend. I'm out probably Thursday through Monday, my wife's around. So if you need tables or tents and potentially help bringing books up, just reach out to me. I can give you a hand. That would be great. Thank you, Bob. You're welcome. Okay. And are, are we still thinking of doing the Friday night preview for friends or because now it's no longer inside it's outside that that would have to be yeah. curtailed yeah 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 so bringing we, them up and taking them back twice would not be 
any fun. Well, we were thinking of three times because it was going to be Friday, Friday for the friends, Saturday, Saturday and, and Sunday. Sunday. So now it's down to just Sunday. Okay. And so, and I've been, um, so tomorrow night, Peter Christoph Snowy Alice has been converted to a Zoom program. And I've been thinking a lot about this because it seems that this is probably how we're going to have to do it going forward for a while. That I think it would behoove the library to get their own Zoom accounts. That way, because with Peter, I had to wait for him to create the link and get me all the information so I could go ahead and update it on our Facebook page and our website and everywhere else. Whereas if we had our own Zoom account, which a lot of libraries have, I could have just created everything on Friday when the decision was made that we would switch it to Zoom and it would have been done Friday. Cynthia? So have we put in the passcodes and everything onto social media? Yes. Okay. Do we, I feel like there was that issue. The Zoom that, bomb issue. Yeah. The Zoom bomb issue. Like I thought that that, I mean, I, I know can, it's not, a, he's not an astronaut, but you know, no. that was just so horrific. And the way that they bombed was via having those be open links and passwords through social media. So Bob Klinger, um, there was a astronaut uh, presentation with one of the other libraries in the woods and it was bombed by, so a lot of kids were attending and there basically was a lot of pornography and things that you couldn't unsee once you saw them. And it was very unfortunate. Um, they tried restarting the meeting. It didn't happen. It did get reported to the police, but it, it was, it's, it's so hard of how do you be a public entity and share this information and yet not put it out there to people who are going to do inappropriate things with it. Okay, so my question is, if we had our own Zoom account, it could still be bombed because in order for people to be able to attend the Zoom event, you have to somehow get out get, the um, meeting number and the password. Our hook is broken. So I was going to say, so, we've done things where you need to just send an email or sign up and then you get, like, you might have the link, but then you get the passcode or something like that, right? Um, so that's a way to kind of prevent them from coming in. We've also done it where if it was more of an open link, we've had um, just kind of somebody monitoring the waiting room um, and like not allowing people in that. I don't know what kind of name. Sometimes they have names you can tell that it may not be um, a legitimate person sort of thing. So those are a couple of ways to... Well, what's your, what is your feeling about uh, the library having its own Zoom account? What would that cost? Oh. I don't know. I could look into, I could talk with some of the other librarians that have the account to see how much it costs them and how they went about setting it up. Okay. It's, it was just a thought that I had that it might not, it might not be a bad thing if we had our own. It could also be used for the friends because the friends can't access the town since they're a nonprofit. Right. It's not associated with the town. So it and would have, it would have other uses. The trustees could use it for meetings instead of needing to go through the town. <clears throat> well, I think we no, have to go through the town. We have to go through, we have, Oh, you we do have, have to go through the town. Oh, yeah. I wasn't sure of that. Okay. We have to, we have to record it to the cloud for, um, this, Posterity. Our, yeah, if you can watch our meetings on TV tomorrow. You know, That's quite all right. I'm attending it now. Well, but thank you, okay. anyways. All right. I mean, it's just something I thought of. We don't, we can always, I can work on getting together pricing and what it would look like and bring something to next month's meeting. That's a good idea. Okay. Let's see what we have in stock. And then. We've had three patrons come in to, where we just opened last Tuesday till eight o'clock again. And we've had three patrons come in, one on Tuesday night and two on Wednesday. 
And at this point, I'm thankful that the library is still open, but that doesn't mean that down the road, things could change. Okay. And that was three, what, like after six o'clock or during? Yes, yes. Okay. And that's all I have. Any Does questions? Anything, on anything else, Any questions? Any comments? Okay, thank you, Cindy. You're welcome. Okay, we're on old business. Jim, as always, you lead off. Okay. Um, I, at the request of the architect, I met with her structural engineer a week ago because uh, he has to build some kind of um, a support for the I-beams that are, we think are embedded in concrete. That is still undetermined at this point. So I met him and all I did was take some pictures. We talked a little bit and that was the extent of our meeting. So that request came from Margot Jones herself. So they are moving ahead on the structural piece of opening up a hole from one floor to another. Um, the drawings show that there could be concrete around those I-beams. Remember this building was built as a bomb shelter back in 1949 and 1950. And that's the height of the, uh, everybody was so afraid of nuclear attack. So, um, that's all I've got from her right now. And I will be talking to her by email tomorrow, letting her know that the mini split has been moved. Um, Jim, question? Jim, um, how, did, how, did she, how did she do her drawings if she doesn't know whether there are steel I-beams encased in concrete where she intends to blast a hole in the library? Well, I, I, that's a very good question, Bob, because the, the old drawings show the I-beams and there's little speckles around the I-beam. And I asked Aviva, what are those speckles? She says, that's probably concrete, probably concrete. But my, the evidence that I have seen so far, and this comes from when we installed the mini splits, the core drilling between floors, Comcast threading their their cables from between floors. I see all concrete, but again, we are not going to know until they really get into it. But that's what that's on her. Um, the other thing I'm going to ask her to do is to, and I discussed this at our last meeting, is to uh, pursue moving um, our new utility room and putting a drop sink in there for the for the for the janitor. Um, there's. There's plumbing, there's supply, there's drains, there's vents on the other side of the wall. And um, she said, yeah, that would be a good idea, but if they can incorporate that into the drawings, but I'll follow up on that. Okay, Cindy, Cindy, um, has there been um, activity in the uh, Bardwell room in terms of the removal of uh, historical society stuff? Cindy? All, Bob, all I can tell you is Bob uh, is uh, Matt Jackatowitz told me there was some activity. He had witnessed okay. some activity. That's all I have. All right. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about related to maintenance? Yeah, Jim? maintenance. Yes, I do. Um, I, I don't know if all of you are aware that with all of the rain and moisture we've had this summer, the fire door on the re main reading room uh, became, um, you couldn't lock it. All right. So the first step was to bring in a locksmith, which, which I did. And he called me and he said, I, I can't repair the lock because that's not the problem. The door has swelled up so it will not close all the way. And that was it. So then we brought a, a carpenter in. Can you, can you fix the door? And he said, probably not. It needs to be replaced. So we went down that road. But before we went down that trail, uh, Bob Smith had asked him, check with the building inspector to see what's required. And we found out that, um, a, no pun intended here, it's a hot issue with the fire, with building inspectors. Structural stuff, fire compliance is a big, big deal. And he's gonna require a, a rather extensive study uh, on loading in that room and design, commercial door, installation, 
probably north of $3,000 anyway. It's going to be a huge expense to us to do that. So once I learned that, I went down with my chisel and I adjusted that jam so that door closes and locks now. It's the same way it's been for 71 years. So my, my suggestion is that we, we take this information, we put it on the back burner for now because we've got a lot of other things on our plate right now that need attention like the lift and redoing the reading room. And we can address this maybe with some capital improvement monies um, in the spring. So there's no danger. People can get in, they can get out easily. The door operates. And just so you know, that's what's going to be the fix. And he's right. That's the way it should be. It's going to have a crash bar, probably wired glass. It's probably not going to look architecturally compliant with our, with our nice building, but that's the way the fire code is. So. I, have a, I have a couple of questions, Jim. Did I understand correctly that it's not a standard door? That's correct. So anything that any any changes if we want to replace this door is going to be a custom order from yes yeah okay. it'll have to be from a commercial door company yes yeah did has anyone and the, and the jams are all embedded into masonry so so playing around with the jams is a big big deal yeah. has has anyone actually reached out to the building inspector yes have they come and looked at it. He has been, he's inspected our building several times, Bob. He, he knows the situation. He's de never pushed the issue. Okay, good. Because we haven't touched good. it. Once once you touch it, you once have you, to make exactly. it. Exactly. No, no, no. That that's my whole that's that's my whole question is how far has it has it gone with the Franklin County building inspector guys? Because it sounds like it hasn't gone far enough that we can just if it's still operational. Yeah, if it meets all the fire codes, the safety codes, e yeah. you know, as far as egress. Yeah. And I, I would agree with your assessment. Okay. okay. Any uh, questions door, about this is the main door? Is that what? Yeah, yeah. A big, yeah. nice, okay. expensive commercial door. <laughs> okay. Okay, Jim. Uh, the other maintenance issue is we did get some water in the in the in the book room, and um, I determined that it was probably an overflow from the gutters because they were not draining properly into the catch basin, which has been an ongoing problem. And um, Keith and his boys will come in and take the cap off and clean out the screen and let the water flow. Keith has been notified. I don't know if he's done the work yet. So, but this is something that's reoccurring, and it just requires annual maintenance. Okay. And I think that, yeah, you know, she's covered the mini split. Oh, the new floor. You guys have all, all um, hopefully all of you have indicated what, what your choices were. I'm going to pick up the storyboard in the morning and take it down to the flooring people and, and place the order. Uh, I have not, but I trust all your judgments. Okay. That's what she <laughs> said. So. Same with me. I've, I've been a little busy. Um, okay. Have a chance to get down to take a look at the floor. So but, it's basically Bob, Cynthia, and I are picking out the floor, and there's there's one choice that that two of us have voted on, and I'm, that's the one I'm going to take. Okay. I wasn't sure you guys even looked at the other side of this. Oh, sure. Board. I looked at it the other day. Yeah. Okay. I don't love your choices, but. Since other people aren't going in to vote, I guess I'm not voted. Well, no, actually, one of, the choices, to to one of the choices you made, I think we're going to take. Okay. I thought I didn't vote for what you guys voted for. No, I didn't say that. Okay. I said there are two of us out of the three that selected one item. <laughs> yes, it's probably a second choice or first choice. I'm not. I don't okay. Think. All right. We'll see. I think it's going to be what it's going to be. <laughs> It's just like, for me, my thought was in your, when you're in an area that doesn't have a ton, ton of natural light, going with a slightly lighter color helps yes. yeah. Um, yeah. brighten up the room a bit. That was, yeah. that was where I was going with my choices. And that but, was the recommendation of the flooring individual because she's an interior decorator. That's what she said. So you're right on, Cynthia. Okay. Um, so that's, that's it for me, Bob. Okay. Um, 
discussion of the latest friends meeting. Megan, I think you were the person there. Yep, that was me. Um, so they made some, um, they talked about the advertisement in the scoop that is going to be going out. Um, they have also made some um, book cover or kind of like bookmarks that um, hopefully Cindy and Rebecca will be able to use to put in just when people check out, we'll kind of throw them in to get some more information out about the friends. Um, and then there was, uh, yeah, a discussion about the procedures um, when getting these um, concerts and groups like that going in um, and kind of how it works. If, you know, they contact Cindy, then Cindy says yes, they go to the cult cultural council and kind of how that works. Um, I think that's a little bit about maybe what Jim was referring to earlier um, with, with these funds. Um, so I think it just needs to be a good communication happening um, to kind of explain to the, you know, between the friends and Cindy about what the, you know, what the plan is with that. Um, and then there was some discussion about the book sale and things like that. Um, but then obviously that has changed since the board of health and things like that changed. So, um, and yeah, there was discussions kind of about the schedule of events and what, what was needed, um, you know, at each one. And I think that's most of it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Any other, any comments or questions? Okay, so um, update on library associates training. Cindy, I think that was part of your report, yes? Yes. Okay, so. so Rebecca, yep. I mean, Rebecca's fully trained in all aspects of what to do at the library. Um, I don't know what more I can show her. She already knows how to do the time sheets and the bill schedules and the social media and the cataloging and the weeding and shelving and all the other little daily task things we're supposed to do. Well, that sounds good. That's good. I'm glad that you accomplished it. Any questions on that or comments? From, oh, not anybody. From anyone? Yep. Okay, and then Bardwell room updates. Cindy, do you know, has there been any activity down below you there? No, there has not that I am aware of, but I am looking forward to the day when that room is available because I know the very first thing I'm putting in there. Okay, it's, it's going to be a utility room. Yes, so can I put in a utility cart? Yeah. Yes. A utility cart? Absolutely. The two-shelved black-wheeled cart. I have no place to put it. I don't see why not. Yeah, absolutely. That's the first thing that's going in there. Okay. <laughs> Is there something that we should um, do to uh, encourage the room to become empty? Because sooner or later, we're going right. to start. Well, like I later. mean, now from my perspective as the director now would be the time because people are still allowed in the building we don't know what a month from now two months from now three months from now we might be back at all built town buildings are closed and we're back to curbside pickup mm -hmm. now would be the time and i'm willing to help them i can borrow steve's truck on a day and meet them over there and help them move things I'm willing to do that part. Jim, would you be willing to reach out to Neil and just uh, sure. indicate that? Because if, if we do get closed down again, locked down tight, then everything's going to get messed up. Cynthia? Yeah. I'd be willing to go and pick up boxes from the liquor store to help them. I don't know if everything's already boxed up and therefore boxes are not needed. Yeah, they are pretty much boxed up, Cynthia. Okay. Well, yeah. I might do one or two trips. I can't, with my knee, I can't do a ton of trips up and downstairs with weight, but I can do some. I'll catch up with Neil and see what his, on his schedule. Thanks, Thanks Jim. I mean, okay. I'm just trying to be realistic. I'm not trying to be like catastrophic. Oh my God, we're heading to lockdown again. I'm just real. The no. reality is we just very don't good. know. It's a very good point. Very good point. Okay. Um, in terms of preparation for construction work, that's um, what I mean, that's basically the Bardwell room, getting that ready. 
Uh, programming update. Is there anything you want to update us on programming, Cindy? All right. So I made the executive decision as the director to make to keep Peter Christoph for tomorrow night because a lot of people were interested in him. And he's a professional and he's done his programs over Zoom several times. He's a I mean, he's a nationally recognized photographer. So it's a good it's going to be a good quality pre, uh, slide slow presentation tomorrow night. Ed the Wizard is still coming. His program is better outside than inside just because there might be a mess with pop balloons and they're easier to clean up off the lawn than they would be off the rug. Next month we have um, Rona Leventhal is coming. She, I, We were able to reschedule her to a Saturday so that she can do her Halloween show outside. George Owen still wants to come and he's willing to do his concert outside. He's just waiting to find out from the rest of his bandmates if they're able to make it earlier than six o'clock and we could do maybe 5.30 to 6.30 because it would still be light enough out for you know, most of that time. And then the um, Union Family, Union 38 Family Network got a grant and we're hosting Roger Ticknell for them. And his program is gonna be outside as well. And after awesome. that, I don't have anything scheduled because I was just keeping in my mind of, well, we are getting into fall and winter, you know, not sure what was going to happen. So the, those October programs might be the only programs we have unless something comes up that was like, oh, this would be a great Zoom program for the winter or a lot of us libraries in the woods libraries tend to all um, more so during the fall and winter sort of co-host events with each other. So if something comes up that looks really great. Oh, and at some point we're going to be co-hosting with some with several of the libraries in the woods, a Zoom on tutorial on how to use Libby, which is the online app. So you can download audiobooks and um regular books to read off of, on your devices. So we're coordinating that right now. That sounds good. I'm Any excited about that. Good. Uh, questions or comments? Okay. Uh, does anybody have any other old business that I failed to list on the agenda? All right. We move to new business, ongoing maintenance. Jim, the um, scheduling of Keith to clean out the drains and the uh, roof of the rotunda, is that something we're going to do in the fall? No, the right spring? away. Right away? Yeah, right away, yep. I just wanted to make sure that we have um, that on the docket so that we can avoid a winter um, disaster. Yeah, usually usually, well, he'll attend to the one in the front that I just mentioned earlier, right yep. away. The other one, he'll probably wait till the, the leaves have come off the trees. Okay. That's All right. we've done in the past. Okay, um, mobile, mobile shelving, have we made um, movement forward on that in terms of of anything and when we're going to do it. Well, Cindy, uh, Cynthia Allen had volunteered her services to assist Cindy in, in going through. And I think both of you are in agreement that, that that's a really good idea. And um, perhaps, Bob, you, maybe you want to add another third person to, for more, because it's, it's not a small job. There's, there's a lot to this. Um, so if, 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 Bob, if you want to take it from here, uh, yeah, I mean, um, so what, Cindy and Cynthia, what's the next step? What's happening next? Well, right now, Rebecca and I are working on going through the adult collection and just shaping, um, just double checking to make sure that there aren't any more books that could potentially be weeded out. Um we definitely need to look through our paperbacks because I'm sure some of those could go. And so it's just a matter of getting the shelving and starting to do the relocation. And I'm wondering if it would make more sense instead of file, instead of shelving paperbacks separately from the hardcovers that we just shove all the books together but that, okay. that's something 
have we selected have we selected the shelving units yet? No, so that would be my first step. So I will call tomorrow about the shelving units. Okay, are we gonna um, want to, I assume the trustees are gonna wanna see what our options are in those shelving units and then decide which ones to buy, yes? Okay. Okay, so I can ask them to get together two or three options for the group to look at. Okay. And we had decided that they're going to be mobile so that they have some ability to, I mean, it's not that you're going to be able to shove them around easily, but there will be some flexibility with positioning them. And just for Bob Kay's benefit, how is it that a determination of when a book or object leaves circulation happens? What are the, what are the so, parameters? There's several different parameters. One would be is it still relevant to the topics of today? Medical journals age out more quickly than other journals. Has it been sitting on the shelf for three or four years and the last time it was taken out was 2018, then perhaps it's time for it to go. If you open it up, does half the book fall out because the spine is all cracked and the glue dried up, then it would be time to discard it. And if it's something popular, order a new copy of it. Um, paperbacks, if they're yellowed and they haven't gone out in a while, they're, those can, um, can be discarded. Nonfiction, it's basically topic, you know, is it topical to today, timely, um, children's picture books, same thing, or if the covers look really gross, can we clean the covers or do we just decide we make room for more? So it's been a huge undertaking. And I think before me, it was done sporadically here and there, but it started with Emma and I, and now it's Rebecca and I, and we're really making a conscious effort to make sure the collection is updated and what patrons are looking for. Okay. Just remember when you do the floor plan out there, you have to be ADA compliant. Keep that in mind, wherever you put these fixtures, we have to make sure that you've got three feet of clearance all the way yep. around it. And any, anything you do has to be ADA compliant. Well, that's okay. the beautiful part about working with this company is that they will design them to be that way. Okay. Good. Right. Okay. And I think, we're, I think we're gonna end up with the circular tables in the stack room once those two stacks are removed. We can put the circular tables in there and still meet the ADA requirements. So you can use that space for books as well. Okay. And again, Cynthia Allen has volunteered to assist you, um, Cindy, if you so desire. Okay, I will be in touch. Oh, that was the one thing I forgot to ask. Did anyone notice that our circulation last month was 1,002 items? Uh, I did. Yes, that's that um, beat our record from September of two years ago when it was one thousand items. Wow! Wow! Well, uh, do you think there's just a thirst? Because I we, think so. Because yeah. patrons are able to actually physically come in the library and pick up books, and they're leaving with handfuls of books. Good. Okay, that's super. Um, th the next one was discussion of moving parts of the collection, but that's all part of what we just talked about. Um, any, uh, oh, and we have also already talked about the updates from the Board of Health and the Select Board where, where in-person public meetings are not allowed. So a public event, like an in-person event in the library um, would not be allowed, but um, it would be allowed to have it outside. Yes, because we can space out more right. Correct. Even better. Yep. Um, and um, I think that just about does it. Does anybody else have any new business that you wish to discuss? Um, the next meeting, if we went on a Monday, would actually be Columbus Day, or excuse me, Indigenous Peoples Day. And I just don't know if you want to do that or, or do it on the Wednesday of that week. I, uh, I'm a cross-country coach, and every one of my meets is on Tuesday, every single one all the way until November. Um, so um, just one more month of this, and then I think I can come back to Tuesdays 
with the uh, exactly a month from today, the 13th, Wednesday, the 13th, if I can get a Zoom site, is that okay with you? I might not be able to make it, but maybe Sheila would be back at that point. Yes, I hope she would be. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, so that's um, one quick thing. I mean, Cindy, do we need to do we need to figure out the Ray Mason thing then before we go? Ray Mason wanted to get paid that night, and I had some money of my own that I was saving to pay a bill, so I just paid him with my money for that night. Okay, but so I feel that means we probably need to deal with it because it doesn't yes. you should be well, paying out Katie, of your own funds. Katie, <laughs> Katie, Katie said that the friends would pay it, so I will just talk with Katie tomorrow and ask okay. her how she wants me to write that up. Is it just they friends owe Cindy seventy five dollars for this, or okay, however That's she cool. wants to do it. Okay, so I, I I wasn't sure if the friends had decided or not. Um, okay, like I said, was I just there, wanted to make sure it was dealt with. <laughs> was Was there any um like pre warning from Ray that he was going to want to be paid immediately? No. Wow. So Something. I just, I felt bad and I had the money that I was going to give that I was going to use. So I just said, here's 70, here's $75. And I counted out the $75 of what I had and paid him that night. Did he give you a receipt? Yes. Okay. Okay. I was, I was going to say in other circumstances, don't feel obligated to do that. You can Oh, I know. If, if, it it us, been, if you have to and say it's out of my control or something, right. you know, and if it had been somebody else, I probably would have done that. But because his wife is a regular patron of ours, I didn't want to cause any upset. So I just did it. Well, we appreciate you stepping mm -hmm. up like that and uh, hope oh, we will welcome. follow through. We will follow. I'm glad it was a very small amount because I don't think I could have done more than that. Wow. Okay. It was a well. It was a pretty well attended event. Like people seem to be really into it. It was just very yeah. buggy. Yes. Okay. Like I said, I just wanted to make sure that was all. Okay. Yeah. There... And I'll <laughs> I'll talk to Katie tomorrow to find out. Okay. okay. Keep us posted to I make will. sure. That any other new business? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll move. Is there a second? I'll second. I'm fairly certain we don't need to do a um, anybody opposed to adjourning. Then Absolutely. the meeting is adjourned at 7.04 and the recording <laughs> is about to be stopped. <laughs>